You talk about being 13 and selling crack. Did that teach you something of how to be a successful businessman or how we all yeah, are, yeah, all are the common? Things, all the things that you apply in business, you know, you know, they say that he has great instincts, you know, but well on the streets, having great instincts can be the difference between life and death, not just losing the deal. Or incarceration. You know, yeah, or incarceration, you know, which is less than death, <laughs> right? And it's, uh, which is, um, and having, being a person of high integrity, you know, people want to deal with you. So what he's basically saying is, even at 13 years old selling crack, he had integrity. It may not have been something that was legal, but at least when people knew that they wanted to get their fix, they knew where to find them. They knew who was dependable. Yeah, it was selling crack, but even at 13 years old, he established integrity. He established consistency. He translates that to something legit, music, production. The rest of his career, it starts to spill over. So how you do one thing is how you'll do everything. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we have another reaction video, this time around, after popular demand, based on a readings of our comment section, you want to see Jay-Z, so we'll react to Jay-Z. So uh, this particular interview, he is being interviewed on a show called Lock In, and uh, some things came up about integrity, things came up about uh, selling crack at 13 years old, some things came back about, uh, about who he does business with, giving back, and uh, what his time is like with Warren Buffett. Again, you and I are watching this together. I haven't pre-screened this. I haven't watched this. My team kind of prepped me what's going on with this interview and uh, wanted my reaction on it. So let's experience this together. Here we go. You embody a business mogul, if, if there ever was one, whether it's the NBA, 4040, um, brands around the globe, your own production company and label. Um, By the way, based on uh, the look of this video, his his hairstyle, his body. It looks like a interview that was done a while ago. I don't think this is current. So uh, I always like seeing interviews before people come up. And um, I always get a lot of success leaves clues type principles uh, with those type of stories because we have a chance to not confuse their chapter 45 with our chapter one. So let's continue. What's your advice to other people coming up? who are trying to make it and trying to become moguls in and of their own right. What, what's your advice to them? Uh, my advice is to do things that are true to you. You know, uh, you know, most things that I'm involved with are extension of being creative. You know, Rockaway is a clothing company. You know, it's part of who you are. And hip hop is your attitude and what you're trying to exp exp express, how you dress. Um, you know, I loved sports growing up. I grew up in a, in a household where sports was on 24-7. You know, mm -hmm. So these are all things that are, you know, are comfortable for me. You know, these are things that I like. So I would just say get involved in things that you love and also have, you know, have a standard for yourself and have some sort of integrity and try to, you know, find some sort of truth in what you're doing. Okay, so I don't think this... Emerald's interview is too old. I, I, I would less say less than five years old, seven years old. Um, but all these things he established, again, don't confuse his chapter 45 and being a mogul with our chapter one. What I mean by that? He established these things after he became a premier artist, after he established his production company. So he had a base. The biggest mistakes that people make early in their life expects to in their entrepreneurial life, especially if they want to become a quote unquote mogul, is they establish multiple streams of opportunities too soon and it spreads them too thin. You establish one thing. Michael Jordan said one thing in the Last Dance documentary. All these endorsements, Gatorade, Nike, McDonald's, Hanes, Chevrolet, none of those endorsements matter if he didn't perform on the court. You don't perform on the court, you don't perform in that one thing that you're known for, in his case, being a hip hop artist, being a producer, if you're not known for that one thing, all bets are off because people are always going to base their perception of you based on your reputation, how you dealt one thing and the second thing, the third thing. If you try to spread yourself too thin, not really mastering any of them, and you don't become uh, that person that you're thinking that you're supposed to be because you're trying to encapsulate. And, and the fear is I'm going to lose revenue. I'm going to lose opportunities here, but you're also going to lose reputation, which is more valuable than money. What did you learn on the street? Because you talk about being 13 and selling crack. Did that teach you something of how to be a successful businessman or how we all yeah, are, yeah, all are the common? Things, all the things that you apply in business, you know, you know, they say that he has great instincts. 
you know, but well on the streets. Having great instincts can be the difference between life and death, not just losing the deal. Or incarceration. You know, yeah, or incarceration, you know, which is less than death, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And it's, uh, which is, um, and having, being a person of high integrity, you know, people want to deal with you, hmm. you know. Look at that. <laughs> so what he's basically saying is, even at 13 years old selling crack, he had integrity. It may not have been something that was legal, but at least when people knew that they wanted to get their fix, they knew where to find them. They knew who was dependable. Yeah, it was selling crack, but even at 13 years old, he established integrity. He established consistency. I said this in previous videos before. Just because somebody was successful doing something illegal doesn't mean they can't convert that to doing something that's legal and ethical. Because think about this. The things that he had to do, looking over his shoulder, protecting his corner, protecting his set, his crew, whatever the case may be, he had to do all those things at 13 years old, looking over his shoulder, watching his back, having instincts in a sixth sense to make sure he knew who he was doing business with and who to avoid and who was creeping in on him. But he translates that to something legit, music, production, uh, 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 the rest of his career, it starts to spill over. So how you do one thing is how you'll do everything. In business, in, in the trust. Street you know, trust and honorable and, you know, a man of your word, you know, you know, all these things come to play in business world. I'm not condoning uh, anything, any street uh, activity, but it's just, it's just the way it is. You are associated with a number of brands, HP, Coca-Cola, Budweiser. How do you decide who you want your name, your brand, your voice um, tied Ooh, to this is and, be a good and, one. and what companies you good don't? Good question. So many opportunities have come a lot of people's way, especially the last couple of years through COVID, lockdowns. A lot of uh, opportunities have presented themselves to a lot of people. So what do you say yes to and what do you say no to? In my experience, there's been much more power, not in the word yes, but much more power and freedom in the word no. So I'd love to know what his filter is. Um, I try to, I try to, sometimes it's, it's, it's just more about relationships. I, I, I pretty much try to work with brands if, we, if there's some sort of partnership there. Uh, you know, I don't typically do a one-off endorsement deals. I, right. I, I've just never been interested in that. It's just more so if I can create some sort of partnership. You know, the Coca-Cola um, was, was a partnership, you know. Was a Interesting. There, here's this difference. One-off deal, you show up, you pitch the product, you do one commercial, you do one photo shoot, and that's it. What he's looking for is partnerships. You know, Patrick Bedave has always coached us in terms of employees that you hire, the vendors you do business with, the insurance companies we carry on our, on our platform. We're looking for not just vendors, but partnerships. So for example, one company can say, hey, we got the best product, we got the best product, we get that one thing. But we feel that the person come to our table may not have the deepest integrity or somebody that follows through with what they say. And sadly, they may have a great product, they may have a great service, but the person behind it is not invested into building a relationship. And those are quickly the people that we say, thank you for your business. We'll use you when we decide to use you, but you're more like a vendor partnership. So in other words, you provide us a service, we'll pay the invoice or vice versa, and we'll just call it a day. Versus a partnership says, how can we both grow together? How can we have a strategic relationship where we're both exceeding together, we hold each other accountable, we're looking for opportunity for one another. How can we both grow? These tend to be the better relationships to have. Not just a one-off deal, not we're just gonna pay you the highest commission, now we're just gonna pay a highest uh, salary over here, but who can give me the best compensation plan so we both can grow? I look out for you and you look out for me. Those are the best relationships. Brand managers, you know, acted as at one time. Um, so I pretty much look for partners you know, as opposed to one-off endorsement deals. Well, yeah, it seems like you insist on uh, some creative control that you're not willing to just give the Jay-Z brand out or let people buy it from Presidential you. Rolex, baby. It's my life. It's who We're I a am presidential a role. So I can't just let someone uh, have creative control of who I am. Sure. It's important. And by the way, this reminds me of a proverb. We walk with, and in this case, we rock with, no pun intended. Let's check it out. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26 reads like this. Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Now, it's very easy to get locked up into somebody's job title, investment into your company, their past experience, their followers on social media. It takes insight into looking into somebody's character. For example, some guy was pitching me right now. Why don't you do this for me? If, if 
I can send you more leads. And I'm asking myself, well, if you can send me leads without any cost to me, why aren't you doing it for yourself? What is it that you're really selling me? This is one of the questions I've asked for a lot of people that uh, try to stick their hand in my pocket because I've been through a lot of people pitching me a lot of things. So you'll gain this muscle, you'll gain this insight by just being involved in a lot of deals. And sadly, some of you may look at sadly, you'll have to go through a lot of failures. You go through a lot of setbacks. You go through a lot of, man, I shouldn't have done that. Only then will you start learning your ways. And to accelerate that learning process is to, again, is to walk with the right people because they can teach you game versus you having to learn the hard way. Best investment advice that you ever received. Best investment advice. It's really interesting. Remember? Whether it was in the market or just investing in life and in business. Yeah, I think just doing things that you believe in, you know, things that you understand. I think that's the best investment. I heard Warren Buffett say that just the other day. And By the way, sometimes the best things to invest in are the things you don't understand because sometimes people are scared. Well, I don't understand. I don't get it. And because they don't take the time to educate themselves and to get it because it's a different language, you need to learn how to speak that language. For example, when I first started coming to the money game and I wanted to invest, I wanted to learn the rules in the money game, I started reading the business section of a newspaper. Whereas before I was reading the sports section of a newspaper. So I had learned the lingo. I had to learn what the charts and the graphs meant. I learned what the percentage signs and the abbreviations, all the acronyms that's involved in a financial services world. I learned all that because I want to learn the rules and the language of money. And so just because you don't understand something doesn't mean you shy away from it. Get to understanding that language and then and only then do you make a decision whether or not to get involved in it based on what you learn from seeking insight. Uh, I just innately felt that, you know, just invest in things that you understand. Speaking of Warren Buffett, you recently spent an afternoon with him uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. I did a quick reel a while ago about whether you should have dinner with Jay-Z or would you rather just have $500,000 right now? And some of you guys are like, no, man, just take the $500,000 and go, beat feet. Matter of fact, I think even Jay-Z told a lot of people, take the $500,000 because you're not going to learn anything from me. But if you're armed with questions and you're prepared, what would you rather do? I'm, I'm curious. Right now in this YouTube video, forget the IG reel, forget the TikTok. What would you rather do? $500,000 right now, somebody gave it to you? Or would you rather have dinner or lunch where you have questions, you got questions with Jay-Z, potentially pitch him an opportunity or gain a new friend? Mutual relationship, what would you rather do? Please put in the comment section below. I'm curious of what you would have to say. But just know this, Jay-Z spent money to have lunch with Warren Buffett, okay? So I wonder what that conversation unraveled. Yeah, went to lunch, you sat down with him. Did it turn out that the two of you had more in common maybe than you thought? I think mo most people do. After a conversation, you realize that you have more in common than, you, than, than you know, things that are dissimilar. Yeah. What, did, what did you take away from that? What did you learn from sitting with him, and what do you think he might have gleaned from meeting with you? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea on his side. On my side, I, he's very sharp, you know, and, and, and again, he just... Remember, Warren Buffett is in his 80s. And for some of you guys think, well, Warren Buffett's always been Warren Buffett. Listen, this guy didn't start making his money until his 50s and 60s, even though he's at it since he was 20s, 30s, and 40s. So Warren Buffett has been at this game for a long time, 50, 60 years, a long time. And he's still out of Omaha, Nebraska. He's not up in Wall Street. He's not up in, in, in Greenwich, Connecticut. He's in Omaha, Nebraska, known as the Oracle of Omaha, known as the greatest investors of our era. And... Uh, I'm glad that he opened up the doors and had a conversation with Jay-Z about finances and, and investments. It's affirmed to me that instincts is really important in business. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't go to any proper business school or any, uh, read any super, uh, follow any manuals like the record business one-on-one or anything like that. I just pretty much followed my instincts. And he just reaffirmed that for me, that, you know, your instincts are very important to you. What I have a feeling that Jay-Z is really underscoring is the advice that he's following. I gather this guy's a sponge, and I think he's kind of holding his cards closer to his chest than what he's alluding. Uh, very uh, distant from really divulging and being very transparent, in my opinion. But uh, I'm reminded of a proverb when it comes to listening to advice. It goes like this. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20. Listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end, you'll be counted amongst the wise. Everybody's calling him a mogul now. You know why? Because he listened. However, you can always tell 
a lot about somebody based on the advice they're willing to listen to and the habits that they keep. The difference between you and somebody else may not be the talent level, because I've seen a lot of people with less talent, but higher discipline and, ha and better habits, and they've excelled further along than somebody with the talent, with the college degree, with the finances, with the credit score, with the lump sum uh, investments ready to go, but somebody willing to listen to advice, have better habits, far exceeded the person with the talent. What about what you own? I, I, I read um, that your mother gave you a three ring binder and you would write your lyrics in it as a child and you'd hide it under your bed so that no one would steal it. Are your words still your most valuable possession? Uh, yeah, because they caused all of this, you know, <laughs> saved my life. Yeah. You know, so where is caused all this? Absolutely. Why? Well, hey, your words and your action will cause all this. Whatever your all this right now is all about. Your current situation right now is nothing but the consequences of your decisions yesterday. Things and activities that I, I was in, just as a broad statement, you know, everyone says that. If I wouldn't have made it here, I wouldn't be here. But no, really, you know, <laughs> there, there was a, 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 you know, one of my friends who's like a dear friend of mine. Um, we would be together every single day. Okay, I don't, even, I don't know who he's talking about, but I wonder what happened to his friend. They were dear friends. I wonder what happened between his friendships when he decided, when Jay-Z decided to make a decision to change his life. It's coming up here. I'm curious about what's about to happen here in the next 30 seconds. Day. And if, if it wasn't for rap, if I wasn't taken away from, you know, the place I was, you know, I, he went to jail for 12 years. There it is. And we were together every single day. There so it is. So I can't even imagine the... There it is. Circumstances where I wouldn't be with him. You feel like it could have been you. No, not could have been. Absolutely would have been. been. Would have been. Would have been him. Yeah. There it is. Jay Z found an outlet that allowed him to rise above the current situation, and his friend who didn't find an outlet to rise above the situation ended up in jail. There it is. Some of you have a hard time separating from your friends and family people you grew up with because you're about to leave them behind. Well. If you don't, you just might end up not in a physical jail, but imprisoned mentally and worse, financially. Meeting with Warren Buffett, um, he's been a huge advocate of giving away his wealth. And whether it's your scholarship fund, the money that you gave to Haiti, you give away money as well. Looking at what your legacy, what you want it to be, uh, Andrew Carnegie said, the man who dies rich dies disgraced. Do you want to die rich or do you want to eventually give it away, give it back? Well, I think there's a different, um, yeah, I think charity is very important. But as far as who we are and where we come from, there hasn't been. By the way, before he even gets into his answer, what would you rather do? Do you rather die rich or do you want to be in a position where you've given everything away? I'll say this. Here's my answer. I'd rather die rich while having given everything away. Because money is just a simple manifestation of the behaviors. And once you learn the money game, money just will start coming two and three because just the way you're wired and things that you are part of, the relationships that you've had, opportunities continue to present themselves to you. I remember when I was broke, nobody wanted to help me out. Nobody was giving me anything. And next thing you know, I started making a little bit of money. I started serving a lot of situations and people. Next thing you know, I get a gift every week, a gift every other day. Praise the Lord for the blessings because it's not, it's not my, my efforts because of the grace of God that I have what I have today and continue to have. But what would you rather have? Would you rather die rich? Because for me, I want to create generational wealth. I want to make sure that my family has plenty of money for multiple generations. That's me. Not only life lessons and experiences and wisdom and the books that I might read and the books I might write for them to read, but also want them having a large lump sum of cash sitting in a trust account and a trust fund and a trust bank waiting for it to deploy upon my family. But at the same time, too, as well, I want to give as much as I can while alive. Uh, you know, our, our generation, we haven't acquired wealth to hand down and give the opportunities to, like, the next generation. So my goal is that, you know, uh, that the next, my next generation can uh, have a better start than of course, I have. Of course, of course. won't have to start and you can't do so that by far, giving everything you know, away. where I come from. So we have to take care of our family first, you know, as well as giving to charities. Sure. Um, Take care of your own. Yeah, we have to. We have to give opportunities. Because the difference between Bill Gates and uh, homeboy Shaji from Bed-Stuy is Bill Gates had access to a computer at a time when no one had access to computers. Because somebody in Bill Gates' family had the financial blessings and financial resources 
to access and purchase a computer for Bill Gates to, to work on. So I totally get his point. What financial head start will your future wealth bring to the people that you love and care about, your legacy, your last name, so therefore they have access to things that springboard them into the next technology, into the next era of tomorrow. That's what money will bring. Computers. It's amazing how many children still don't yeah. in this country. So the opportunities, you know, people, you know, were afforded opportunities that we just didn't have. And uh, I think that's really the difference between success and failure is opportunity. Well, you have to have someone's drive in there as well. You have to put that in there. But, you know, if given the opportunity, you know, things would ch turn out very differently for a lot of people. Yes, and knowing what to do with that opportunity when they get there. So many times we've seen opportunities come around for the right people, but they have the wrong mindset, the wrong mentality to go about taking advantage of the opportunity. Next thing you know, the opportunity passes its way on. So when opportunity presents itself to you, will you be ready? Are you sure? Will you be ready? I hope so. That being said, guys, I love your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? I'd love to know. Before I let you go, please check out these other two reaction videos here on different topics, celebrities, and artists, and how it pertains to leadership, money, generational wealth creation, and entrepreneurship. So with that being said, guys, if you found value in this video, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting subscribe and hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. I got some very interesting content coming up here in the next 30 days because our country, the United States of America, is due for a massive correction in the marketplace. What should you do about it? I'm going to be putting some content out there, some strategies, some thoughts, some behaviors to make sure you come out of this recession and planting the seeds of the next future of millionaires and, yes, billionaires in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.